Hey guys, Chris Dunn here, aka the Boogie Man. Tonight's episode, we're gonna work on one of these badass GeForce 101As with a handcuff. Also, this is our transmission out of the Boogie Man. What we're gonna do is we're gonna show you our badass boogie sliders, and we're gonna put a few things together, and we're gonna give you some tips about these transmissions. One of the most crucial things on these transmissions is getting the gear shifter set up properly. If you don't, they, they'll they knock themselves out of gear. It's just a, you know, a quick thing to do, but you really gotta pay attention to setting up the gear shifters. But besides that, it's badass. Boogie slider. We've talked about the boogie slider. This is something we make in house now. This was basically built for our racing program. They are for sale. You can kind of check them out inside of here how they really work, how they engage, and this and that. Um, this is a first production set. We had a test set we had made and run for a while. This is our production set. Man, they're just going to be awesome for racing. They will last a little longer, I think, than the older style dog rings, but they also shift so much smoother. They're really going to be friendly, and you're going to like them. Now, if you notice, we have tape on the top of the transmission. The reason we do, that is our gear ratios. All our gear ratios, our input and cluster shaft ratios, all of that stuff's right here. And of course, we're just like any other racers, we don't want you to see none of that. So we got it taped over right now. Because what we do a lot of is we have multiple first gears, we have multiple seconds, we have multiple thirds, and we have multiple one-to-ones for fourth. But what we do a lot of is we literally change main drive sets. So if I want to just take everything down just a tick, then we just change a main drive set. I don't know if everybody else does it that way. That's the way I do it. So we keep multiple of these main drive sets and that's how we can, let's just say we don't want to change one gear. We want to change the spread on all of them. So we just change a main drive and then that'll change the spread of what we want down the board. Like if we do a rear gear change, we always do a main drive set change. That just kind of works hand in hand as we've learned over the time. First thing we're gonna do right quick is good sealer. Don't have to be nothing crazy. In fact, I'll be honest with you, the best sealer for these things is you go to your hardware store and I meant to go get some and I didn't is good old silicone. Like silicone in a, in, a, in a tube, in a caulking gun. I prefer silver though. If you're gonna do it, use it, use silver. That stuff works awesome. And if it gets in the transmission, it don't hurt a thing. Basically now, we're gonna spread a little bit out here. I actually just, y'all gonna laugh. I take my finger, I'm just kinda old school, just like this right here. And I go around and I know exactly where it needs to seal. So I try to not put no more than I have to, you know, especially down around the bottom. That's where it's really crucial because that's where it'll want to leak. Careful with it. And I'll do a little bit down here. And I know that sounds crazy, but it's just the way you do it. And I still, like I said, I wipe it with my finger. Cause it's just silicone man or gasket maker it will come off just go around here do a little bit of this like i said i don't like getting too much on it because it gets in the transmission i don't believe it or not a piece of this don't really like kill the transmission or hurt the transmission but why why get any more in it than you need one other thing i do and i've got this set up like when we go these nifty little table i built is this is how I do transmissions so fast is I've got it built where I spin it and we'll maybe take a picture of this and you guys can build them at home. But I can stand it up. I can literally change first gear without taking nothing but the tail housing off. I have got a piece of pipe right up here, a piece of aluminum that I have made that if I take with me to the track, I set it on a table, I set it right there on that. I set it, I can literally pull out off the main shaft nut first gear and then I'll pull the cluster out because my first gears are made to the cluster shaft. Nothing. I can change first gear in no time. And everybody says, well, what does it matter about changing first gear? Well, 
I may want my 60 foot a little better, or I may want to do something a little different. You don't never know. It's always worth trying. But basically, I've got all this took apart. I'm not, like I said, walking you through like rebuilding a 101, because if you own one, you already know what to do when it comes to that. So there's no need to, you know, reinventing the wheel by no means. And believe it or not, it is that simple. These are the two bolts right here that you kind of don't never see. I put a little sealant on them. I don't put a lot. I put just a little bit on them and I actually put it on the bolt just like that right there. And just get it started. And do the same right here. Put a little bit on it. And let's see, that is this one right here. Like I said, these, I'll tell you what I love about this 101A is what these G4 transmissions. They're built off the basis of a Super T10. And I'm going to tell you, I love how simplistic these transmissions are. These things are so simple, it ain't even funny, man. You know, I run a Jericho for a long time, which there's, you know, that's a good transmission too. Uh, they're built off a Ford top loader and they're just not quite as friendly to take apart as this thing is. Um, don't take but a minute. That's just something I use. I kind of tap it down. I'm checking it here. She's free. Everything's good. Snug this on down some more. So I guess on down some more. Now, you could torque this if you wanted to. I don't really torque it because number one transmission, I ain't into it long enough, but you don't got to, man. If you just put uh, a good bit of ass on it, that's all you need. Uh, like that right there. If you wanted to, that's about a half inch bolt. Now we're gonna put the tail housing on. So I just still do it again, just go on around like this right here. And I just come around where I know I need it. I don't go, I don't go crazy putting it, you know, everywhere. Because, I mean, I put it around there, but you ain't got to, some people just glow way too much silicone and sealer on the stuff. It just, that's just a waste, dude. I come right around through here like this and that is done. Now, I've did this so much that I pretty much know how everything has to be. Got to put my snap rings on. Now, one thing that I do, and I know I'm blocking you guys, I don't mean to, is I keep new snap rings. I don't always put new, new snap rings on. But sometimes I do. So if you're going to do enough of the transmission stuff, I always tell people I keep constantly keep new snap rings around on purpose. You can buy them, just look them up. Uh, they use mainly a lot of the same snap rings are used to throughout this transmission. So if you damage them, I mean, kind of inspect them. It's a good, it's really good practice. If I hadn't already just to took this thing apart a while back and put to change the gear ratios, I'd be putting new snap rings in it. But since I've already put new ones in and all I've really done here is put in their sliders. Prime example, I'm gonna show you something people miss. What I'm doing here is I just put the first snap ring on. It's not in the groove. And I'm just gonna kind of tap on that nylon a little bit just to make sure. Oh, you hear it pop? It went in. So I got a lot of little trick tools I use around here. So that's in there. Okay. I inspect that snap ring. Snap ring's in the groove. Let's put the second one on. This holds the reverse gear back. That's what this does. If you notice, my snap ring pliers have been modified multiple times. And the reason they're modified is 
you keep trying to find the right kind of snap ring that you want, just like you got to watch right here. I'm not, I'm not perfect either, but I've got reverse on backwards like that. I'm glad I looked at that. The little shoulder on reverse, and what it does is keeps it off the bearing. The shoulder goes this way because, it, like I said, it keeps it off the bearing. And if you don't, if you do not double check that, you know I don't do this for a living, so sometimes I have to always go back and double check that I got everything. Just like now, we're gonna put the tail housing on. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Next episode, we're going to finish putting this badass transmission together. And in the third episode, we're going to show you how to adjust the shifter. Chris Dunn, aka the Boogeyman.